Season 2, Episode 17, Augmented Reality Workbooks in the Human Body, Magic School Bus Style. But first, let's hear from our sponsors. Learning fundamental writing and math skills doesn't have to be boring. Introducing the My First Augmented Reality Workbook series from Teacher Goals and Quiver Vision. With the Quiver app, students unlock interactive experiences that teach path of motion, phonics, writing, and more. This is perfect for schools that are one-to-one -one or have tablet stations set up for students to learn. Our augmented reality workbooks are changing the way kids learn, read, and develop literacy skills. They'll love the interactive experiences and you'll love the results. Email us today about bulk purchases for your classroom, school, or district. Contact at teachergoals.com. My first augmented reality workbook series, Unlocking the Power of Learning. The Hitchhiker's Guide for Educators Tech Talk will begin in 24 seconds. Welcome to Teacher Goals Tech Talks. I'm Amanda Fox here with co-host Heather Brown, and we're excited you decided to hitchhike your way with us today through not only tech tools, but the pedagogy and strategies behind them. Today's a special episode because we're going to share innovative and, an innovative and immersive approach to education, specifically highlighting Quiver Vision, who is no stranger to the show. Um, we're stoked to have them back on to talk about the My First Augmented Reality Workbook series, their brand new hygiene and human anatomy pages. Yes, we're talking Miss Frizzle style, except you don't need the school bus. Um, we're stoked to have them here. Um, Heather, you've actually used uh, Quiver Vision in your classroom. Yes, actually, I've used it quite a bit. So um, and on top of math, I also teach kindergarten through fifth grade STEM. So I've used everything from holidays where they have like Earth Day or for kindergarten, we actually did the snow globe one, but we actually put their pic their class pictures on as the snowman. Oh. So it looked like they were in the snow globe. It was adorable. Um, I've used the plant life cycle and first grade is actually using the water cycle without me on Friday. I'm kind of nervous, but I know they can do it. Um, so holidays, they have masks now that we've used and like almost any topic we want to try, they have. And it's just absolutely amazing. And the kids are hooked. It's so much more fun to learn, you know, in a 3D way than just a boring worksheet. Absolutely. And I can't and wait to hear what else Nels has to share with us. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Quiver Vision is a educational um, augmented reality company. They have uh, augmented reality coloring pages that bring learning to life. And um, again, we're going to showcase the brand new My First Augmented Reality Workbook series where students can learn handwriting, phonics, spelling, sight words, and even writing through journaling in a fun new way. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and bring up Nils. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Heather. Thanks so much. So, um, thanks for or for joining our show all the way from New Zealand. If, if you kind of want to uh, tell us a little bit about Quiver and our viewers that are watching, um, if you have any questions for Nils, feel free to cop those, pop those in the comment and um, check out QuiverVision.com. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, thanks for having me on this morning. Um, it's lovely to be here. Uh, so, yeah, Quiver, as you know, is an augmented reality coloring app. Uh, we've been going for just shy of 10 years. Uh, we originally started kind of working in the entertainment space, um, but got an amazing reaction from educators. Uh, so we've spent the last kind of three or four years, maybe a little longer, um, developing an extensive range of educational content that can be used in the classrooms, very popular in libraries as well. Um, we work with a range of different educators like yourself, Amanda. We've done a lot of work together. Thank you, as always. Thank you. Um, 
yeah, to slowly work on not only creating the coloring pages, but trying to create what we call activity plans as well, uh, which include a range of supportive resources for teachers uh, to use in the classroom with their students. Um, and that was, again, based on kind of feedback that we got from, from teachers themselves. Uh, and so that's uh, the last kind of 18 months, we've seen that start to grow really nicely. Um, and we've got, now we've got that subscription model that we use. There's a few free pages um, and there's a whole lot of different options in terms of the way you can subscribe to our content. Uh, as a company, we're based in New Zealand. Uh, I'm in the North Island in Auckland, uh, but we generally, most of our work is focused on the kind of US curriculum, as you know. Um, so yeah, that's a very quick intro of kind of who we are and what we're doing and where we, where we like to see ourselves moving forward. Absolutely. And I'm just going to pull up the website here for our, our viewers. Um, so this is quivervision.com. Um, when you go to the, oh, where, my, where we go? When you go to uh, the website, you can, um, you can find the coloring packs by clicking here on coloring packs and you can search by content topic, uh, the Shakespeare discoveries new. So I'm, I'm super stoked about Shakespeare because, you know, being being an English teacher and, and, and humanities background um, and, you know, a lover of something rotten, the musical. So. Uh, yeah, that is an exciting, something we've actually wanted to do for a long time, something based on Shakespeare. And we had um, a partner client reach out to us from the UK um, and they were launching a new theatre. Um, based all around Shakespeare. And so we developed um, yeah, these three coloring pages. We actually also did a digital environment for them. Um, oh, wow. The room. Uh, yeah, I can, I can touch on that a little bit later when we talk about that a bit more. Yeah, okay. So then we have um, the human anatomy pages, which this is what I was talking about, guys, Miss Frizzle style. Um, if you were a lover of Magic School Bus, like this pack is for you. I, I remember watching it as a kid and uh, being super excited to kind of explore the human body. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to do some app smashing this week. The circulatory system, I plan on definitely uh, using this page and apps, you know, taking a video of the actual page in action, the, the AR content, putting it in Canva. And using animated pathways to have Miss Frizzle's bus do the stop at each part, you know, the heart, the veins, and the arteries. So, um, but there's the nervous system. I love that new animation feature. Oh, yes. It's it's amazing. Um, the respiratory system, skeletal system, muscular system. So, augmented reality coloring pages aren't just for elementary students. Um, I've used it with middle school students, especially uh, around Earth Day. Um, you have guys... Again, if you go back to the activity plans, they have, how many lesson plans are you up to, Nils? Uh, I think we've got 75 live on the, on the website. And wow. I've got another 10 or 15 being reviewed at the moment. So, so we've got a really great, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got a great team of ambassadors uh, globally that help us create these. And then um, our head educator, who's Zenny, who lives in Florida, who you know, Amanda. Um, yeah, Zenny's great. <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. And she's really helped us kind of start to increase the number that we can get live. So that's, yeah, while we're focusing on the coloring pages, we're actually, this has become a big major focus for us because it helps the teachers have a full lesson plan rather than just one coloring page. And then they need to go and build out the rest of that lesson. We're trying yeah. to get them, yeah, more. Yeah, and again, the butterfly life cycle, um, rip currents, prehistoric animals, hand washing, um, comparing animal and plant cells. Well, and um, my dog obviously approves. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we have neighborhood kids that uh, use our use our house as a revolving door. So there's flag a game of flag football going on in the yard right now. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, and headed by my ten year old daughter. <laughs> So <laughs> she's uh, she's all about uh, Jayhawks. <laughs> but yeah, so, so the lesson plans are there. They're available for, um, for you to download so you don't have to start from scratch. Um, we've got a user. They're using the digestive system right now for state test review in middle school. Yeah. Ooh, so, um, I love that. Middle, middle school students love to color. 
um, they they love to take the sheets and bring them to life. And um, we uh, Teacher Goals has also partnered with Quiver Vision um, to create augmented reality uh, children's books. So the monsters have manners. These are the coloring packs for that. But let's go ahead. Let's let's look at a video of um, let's look at a video of the uh, the human anatomy in action. I'm excited. An adult can hold anywhere from four to six liters of air in their lungs at any given time. So those are pretty, those are pretty amazing. Um, being able to... I was impressed by that backflip. <laughs> and, yes. Yeah, and, and in addition to the uh, the augmented reality content, being able to um, pin the actual skeletal system or, or see through the body and look at the digestive system, um, there's also facts. So as you click through the facts, uh, you can create guided notes for students to, to kind of go in and, and make sure that they're getting all the information that they need from the coloring sheets. Um, but one of the things, one of the things I'm most excited about, I think, is the um, the augmented reality workbooks. So the this is the um, this is a collaboration between Teacher Goals and Quiver Vision. Um, I know how Nils. How long ago did we start working on these? Oh, I don't want to tell the truth when we started. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they are a long time in progress, actually. Or like, like the human anatomy papers, they, they, they're probably actually the longest page. I think we may have started working on those pages maybe like six or seven years ago. Wow. And kept, kept putting them to the side and doing other stuff. So it was actually for us internally, it was so awesome to get those live. Um, but yeah, the, the workbooks, we've wanted to do the workbooks. Ever since we first launched, the, one of the common bits of feedback we got was that they'd make really good flashcards. Yeah. So it's like, oh, we should release some flashcards. There are a couple of other flashcard options on the market. Um, and then we slowly started to build, what should we do? And we thought, oh, ABCs would be a good place to start. We could add some animals. And then, like the anatomy pages, we kind of parked it to the side and did other projects and stuff like that. Um, and then we just slowly chip away at it. And then we started talking to you, Amanda, and you, you, it was kind of your idea, as much as it was ours, to kind of then wrap it into a book. Um, and yeah, so then I think, I don't know, was that maybe two years ago? Oh, was... I, think two, I think two years ago. Yeah, easy and, two years. Yeah, and yeah, just so flashcards, you know, they're they're awesome. And uh, but typically in a classroom, not every every student gets to have their own pack. So yeah. I thought, what if exactly what if it was a workbook? So um, the ABC pages are packaged together and. Um, and they're put together in a way that uh, that have students practice their handwriting um, in addition to their letters. And with inside inside of the app, students can actually uh, practice spelling. So um, let's just kind of look at some of the pages. So you've got animal facts, you've got path of motion, phonics, and letters. Um, this engages in real time coloring that builds dexterity, improves visual perception, leverages creativity. And then interacting with the AR experience, it brings the pages to life through coloring and play. And it keeps students kind of coming back. So once you scan, you need an, you need an education subscription for this, or parents at home need an individual subscription. And um, once you have a subscription on the dashboard, each student has a QR code and a clip art piece that they can log into the app with. They can access it from home. So um, if you are a teacher teaching handwriting, reinforcing handwriting um, letters, this is a great activity book to do in the classroom, but also send home with students because they have, you know, if you're not one to one, parents have access to uh, or students have access to tablets, devices, phones, 
Um, and it's got an alphabet recognition checklist. You've got the checklist on recognition and then you have the mastery. And I love the, or well, I, I made the, <laughs> I made this page. So um, <laughs> the, parent, the parent initials, just reinforcing that parents are double checking um, with students at home for letter recognition um, and then also handwriting mastery. So we've got recognition and handwriting that's being assessed here. And here's here's kind of an example of a page. We've got the alligator here and they color the alligator. It comes to life. Um, they've got the path of motion on the right. Um, you know, A is a big line down, big line, um, big line slide down, little line across the middle, and then the small A. So it has, uh, I guess, Sticks. it's the path of motion. Yeah, yeah. written written ways for uh, students or for teachers to help or in parents of how the path of motion is taught. And um, having taught third grade for as many years as I did, when we did cursive, you could tell those students who knew their path of motion because then when they went to transfer into cursive, it was much easier because they knew the correct path of motion. Yeah, my uh, my second grader, uh, Connor, he's, he's learning cursive right now. And I think his cursive is better than his print. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. But um, yeah, so th so they learn the path of motion. Uh, they in in this activity, you know, they have to uh, what is it? Circle all the bees, um, lowercase and uppercase bees, or just uppercase. Um, and then here's the C's. We got a camel, and my uh, my six year old son loves this book. So we're going to, I'm going to play a quick video on what he has to say about the book. Um, we got a user who says the world map is still a favorite for geography skills. Um, I love the world map. That's, that's a fantastic page as well. But this is, this is Finn and he's going to talk about uh, the workbook. And I'm Finn Fox and I'm five years old. So there's this so I like this book because there's this app on it, and you can get it on an iPod, iPad, and a phone. The thing that, and I like this book because there's, you can, there's this app where you can make these come to life, and you can have games, you can do fun games, spell it, or trace it with your finger. All right, so that's Finn, and uh, that kid has come home. Just about every day, he's got he's got it on his iPod. He's got an iPod with the Quiver loaded, and and he interacts with it. And uh, he's on a second workbook because he had to. Uh, he colored all the first one, and he wanted to do it again. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, our uh, our school district here in Oldham County, they have uh, integrated the AR workbooks across the district for all pre K students. And uh, they're doing a fantastic job. I'm looking forward to going into the building and seeing the workbooks in action. But for those of you who are interested, um, you can buy bulk orders for your, your classroom, school, or district uh, by going to teachergoals.com forward slash books forward slash bulk orders. Um, if, if you want to check it out prior to committing to a bulk purchase, you can also purchase these on Amazon. There's the handwriting book, but we also have a journal. And um, our handwriting journal is pretty awesome because it has uh, sight words in it and it has students and it, it like gets them to start uh, focusing on uh, the, the first, you know, 100 common sight words and they go through and they have to practice integrating it into their writing. So I will, uh, I'll pull that up in just a second, but um, the handwriting books on Amazon, so is the journal. And having... Yeah. Oh, sorry. The handwrite ABC video at all with, with the games that Finn spoke about, the tracing game. I, yeah, I, I don't think that's I. So yeah, because that, that's where the app like also complements, I think, what you created, Amanda, with the tracing digital side of it and the combination where you've got them not only doing it on the on on a device, you can then go back to the book. I think for me, I've got a seven year old, a six year old, and a five year old, and all three of them are kind of obsessed with it but they're more obsessed with probably the app side of it, but they don't get that until they're finished doing mm -hmm. the side of it. It's a so good that, motivator that way. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at that. I'm just gonna, yeah, we'll play after add. <laughs> All 
All right. Brought to you by Slack. <laughs> here we go. So here's the animal pages, the animal ABCs, with the app in action. The color it. Yeah, so that's the portal where you can pick between scanning the cards or playing the actual games. Keeping the kids away from the games is always challenging. But... <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's some simple animations, and you also get to hear the phonics there, the way that the, the letters are said. I have to ask, do the animals make sounds? Yep. Awesome. Yep. My three, four-year-old, sorry, <laughs> would really be into that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they all make sounds. There's also an animal library as a separate part of the app, so you can just, without having to actually scan the cards, you can just look at all the animals and learn lots of facts about the animals and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, I'm just muting it or I'm I'm pausing it because uh, we can't hear well over the uh, actual sound of the video. But um, and, and oh, I keep what? yeah, that's a there's a, yeah. some example of yeah. So that's this shows you the games just there. I think I mean, yeah. Yeah. So inside the app, you have the scan the AR cards, the animal library, and this games the games. So as you go in, you can do alphabet tracing that actually teaches path of motion. Um, and then there's drag and drop. The drag and drop is actually a spelling game. Yeah, good stuff. Oh. And it has the uh, the phonics la 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 the l la la la. It, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, all well, my kids love playing that. It's good fun. And I like that, like, for those younger learners or the ones who might struggle, they have the outline already there. So even if they yeah. might not know the sounds yet, they can at least match it. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Yep. So um, reinforce the spelling. And then, again, the uh, the path of motion is here. So it takes students to stand. And it has all the letters. Once they master it, I believe it gives them a check in the app to show that yeah. they they've um, – Yep, that they've they've mastered that letter. So um, this is definitely uh, a fun and in innovative way to uh, to learn the alphabet. And um, the next, you guys have been busy. You've got you've got all these new new pages that have come out. Um, I know, like I was working closely with you guys up until last August, and. And man, you just you you guys have so much that, that has come out. So um, the next thing is the hygiene pages. So I'm going to play that video real quick, and then I'm going to key up uh, 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 um, the journal so we can look at the journal. Cool. So um, I have to ask, was the hygiene pages inspired by COVID? <laughs> uh, it wasn't actually. Yeah, it kind of was. It was good timing with the, the uh, with COVID. Um, but it was done in collaboration with Melbourne University. Uh, and it was actually done to support the Abra Aboriginal communities um, in the outskirts of Australia. Uh, and it was they set it up as kind of a... a uh, what do you call it? like a bus that drove around and they took these pages and they took it out and they wanted to create, like we've been talking about the whole time, um, a fun and interactive way for kids to learn about hygiene. Because no, you know, I don't know, my kids hate me telling them, oh, can you wash your hands? Can you blow your nose? Can you mm -hmm. use one towel each? Um, so yeah, using something digital with an iPad, uh, it was really successful. And so, yeah, that, that was, yeah. And then the, the timing of COVID just happened to work in with that. Really. Nice. Yeah, uh, Trisha is watching. Trisha is our author and illustrator of Peter and Meter, which I'm excited because that is our next joint project. 
Yeah. Um, and, and Finn's going to be so excited that you said that because when he made, when I was filming him, <laughs> yeah, he he's like, am I going to be on YouTube? Am I going to go viral? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we want to go viral in, in a very nice hygienic way with those hygiene, you know, with the hygiene pages <laughs> going viral. And, uh, but yeah, so let's, let's take a look at this journal. Um, and the journal, I am very excited about. It. Yeah. Can I, can I, the journal is, is an interesting one. So even for us, uh, when we first started doing this kind of work and talking to teachers um, and asking them what kind of content they wanted, one of the most popular and common ways that teachers were using it was in a creative writing way, which is kind of what this journal is towards, um, and which kind of surprised us. We thought they'd be more particular. They'd want pages like the human anatomy. And they're like, oh, we just like random things that we can give to our students and they can creatively write and then see it to come to life. So yeah, the journal is, yeah, I really like this one too, it's awesome. Yeah, so, so with the journal, the teacher provides writing instruction. So you're gonna go ahead and do your lesson on opinion writing, informative writing, narrative writing, and fold in that sight word recognition. And it covers basic punctuation, the period, the exclamation point, question mark, comma. Um, and then explain. you're gonna explain the writing prompt. You're gonna introduce it to them and, and really frame the objective, like what students are trying to achieve through that writing page. So um, again, students are engaging in real-time coloring. They're using the app to bring it to life. They're practicing writing in conventions. So again, an education subscription. Um, that education subscription is good at home. They can log in from their device at home. So this is a great, uh, I don't want to say, I'm, I'm not a big fan of homework, but um, this, is, this is a great fun way to get students to actually want to do their homework. Um, we've got our skills and mastery standards here, our writing standards. So using a combination of drawing, dictating, and writing to compose an opinion piece, um, information, inf informative or explain. Which uh -oh. What? We got, just, we got an shit freezing for anyone else or just? Yeah. Yeah, you just, okay, just remember now. me. Okay. Am I good now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, now you're good. <laughs> so we have the basic punch, punctuation. Uh, I can't talk today. Punctuation. Uh, it, it explains what these are. Um, and then the sight word list. So we have these sight words um, that we focus on. What, what, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, 30 sight words. One, two, three, four. Yep. So we have 30 five sight words. Six. Yep. I had, I had to do the, the quick math in my head there. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of, we have a math workbook that uh, that is in the works as well that is going to cover uh, shapes and, um, and more. So we have the smart sentence starters. And then here's our first page. The first page Ooh. is the hot air balloon. And um, there's a great SEL lesson on this and, and Quiver's uh, activity plan library as well. They breathe with the, with the balloon as it kind of goes up and it comes down. And all about hot air balloons. So there's a QR code that takes them um, to a video that they can watch about hot air balloons, scan the QR code, watch and learn about how they work, and then then they're going to draw and write about what they they learned. So they use hot air. They can um, practice writing that sentence here. And then um, the next page is uh, narrative. So traveling in a hot air balloon. If you could travel in a hot balloon, where would you go? I would go to. And then opinion writing. So hot air balloons and weather. What kind of weather would you like to have if you were traveling in a hot air balloon? Explain why you would like that type of weather. I definitely don't want to write me. <laughs> so, um, and it gives them options and introduces new words. And um, then there's a uh, free write. So if, um, you know, you, you have four different ways to leverage each coloring page. So if you're teaching narrative writing and you want to go through all the narrative writing pieces um, with the pages and do a week or two of narrative writing, then you can come back to those pages and look at it through a different perspective of opinion writing or informative writing. Um, and it's great for uh, cross-curricular pieces because um, we have the design your own shoe. 
which we have each piece for that as well. But um, Tyrannosaurus rex, some of these pages can be used in cor correlation with science and math. So the race car one I like because it talks about um, the science of racetracks. So make, I, like in designing these, we tried to make sure that you could connect it to other, other standards and leverage this through actual writing. And again, oh, let's see. Finland school is the best in the world. They don't have homework. Yeah, I'm, I'm not not a fan of the homework. And I don't I don't know if my teachers like or my kids teachers kind of were were getting together to uh, to make my life a stressful week. But we have two <laughs> we have two big projects um, that we have, you know, that we have to help facilitate at home this week. We have a habitats project, which I it's funny because I actually mentioned um, the different animals that, that you guys have, the different packs for the, for the habitats. And I was talking to my son about maybe um, putting one of the coloring pages in his habitat so students can actually scan it and, and kind of interact and play with that. That's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we've got fun learning, no boring subjects. Um, change the old school system. Yes, yes, yes. So that's exactly what we're trying to do here is um, make sure that that learning's fun, that writing's fun, and that they want to come back. They want to interact with these uh, pages. They're excited when, you know, a teacher says, all right, let's get out your, uh, get out your journal. We're going to do some journal writing today. And um, they really get to scan the page and explore where that page is going to take them. I like that it kind of has a homeschool connection. So even if you don't use it as homework, like for me growing up as a kid, I would have loved this and I would have just pretended that I was the teacher all the time and played school with it. And even though it's not homework, I'm still learning from it. Absolutely. I love having that connection. And I know I have constantly have parents asking you, Hey, what else can I do? And this would be a fun thing that it's, a, isn't like it's an assignment. Exactly. And again, you can buy these um, on Amazon. Um, they're ten dollars on Amazon, but we also do bulk discounts for schools, districts, and classrooms. So if you send us an inqu inquiry on how many students you have, um, whether you're a classroom teacher, a district admin, a uh, school principal, get a get a hold of these workbooks. Put them into the hands of students, um, pre-K through second grade. You, you can have the pre-K introducing handwriting. You can have the second graders who need that extra reinforcement. And again, th these are excellent materials to send home and because they're going to want to play with this. They're going to they're going to run home with these workbooks and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, look at this. Check this out. And um, I know Finn slept with his his workbook he, like he literally took it to bed with him. I'm um, the same with the Monsters Have Manners um, kids book that that just came out. He's got his little magnetic monsters and we, we do no device time and take away the devices. I can't take away that kid's imagination. He's in there click clacking with the magnetic monsters and he's got his monsters have manners book. So the, uh -huh. the error pages just really um, make kids more attached to the books mm -hmm. because they're more than books. It's more than just reading. It's an experience. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It does it creates, we've always found it creates an emotional attachment to the book or the content itself and because the way you color it is slightly different to the way anyone else would color it you do feel like it's yours and that's mm -hmm. kind of the magic of it i guess absolutely that that personalization and connection that students make um you guys also do digital environments we do can you talk a little bit about that yep yep so uh do you, do you know where the video is man you can I do have the video, so um, I'll go ahead and play the digital aquarium. Yep, so, okay. Here we go. Hatchog Bedford Library Interactive Aquarium by Quiver.
Yeah, that's a, a really awesome project and partnership that we did with the library uh, in, in New York. Um, but just taking a step back, so we, we developed the digital environments to enable uh, groups of students or, or library, library, it's really popular in, in places like libraries, but essentially when you're using Quiver, it is more or less like a one person thing. You've got your coloring page, you scan it, it comes to life, colored the way you want it. Um, and so the idea with the digital aquarium was that you would take 30 kids, they'd all color their own fish, they all scan their fish, they get a quick augmented reality experience on the iPad, but they can then submit their creation um, to one large aquarium, and you can have this group experience where all 30 fish or more, there's, there's not really a limit um, on how many you can scan. Um, and you can all kind of have that magical experience together. Um, and so as you saw in that video there, you've got that library actually took it another step and they had a projection from the from out from inside onto their windows that was seen from the street front um and it was huge it was uh yeah yeah you saw in the video it was massive but people from the outside would then come past and they had the scanning stations and coloring outside they'd scan them and color them in and um it was really really popular really good. like yeah with beyond i think they the, the number of people they managed to pull into the to their library they weren't ready for it they, they they hoped it would work but then it was became so popular that um yeah they were a little overwhelmed but then they also had uh, another station set up inside and they also did some outreach as well where they took it around the community which was cool and so at the moment we've got the digital aquarium we've got um a digital airfield which is basically like an, an airstrip with a range of uh, World War planes, historical planes. And again, kids color them in, then they all go up in the air and fly around this environment. Um, and we're currently working on a city environment as well, which will have a range of different cars and vehicles, fire trucks, police cars, normal cars, stuff like that. Nice. I'm still waiting on that bee, that beehive. The beehive, yeah. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Um, I, Savannah Bee Company. I need to reach back out to them. That would be amazing to have, like, like the fish in the aquarium. The kids color them, and let's say scan it. Their their actual colored fish show up. It would be really cool to have that with bees as well. Yeah. Um, and the other one we, we've always wanted to do is yeah a butterfly environment because oh butterfly garden yeah yeah, yeah butterfly a logo garden. and stuff like that would would just be really neat to have something like dinosaurs. That. So we actually have a dinosaur one. Yeah, it's just. <gasps> Not really ready for release, uh, but yeah, we oh, did have a That makes me um, excited. Oh my yeah. gosh. This is up now. <laughs> we can create our own Jurassic Park. That's I love amazing. it. So that's what it is. Yeah, it's Jurassic Park. And yeah, you can scan and the dinosaurs just kind of roam around this like giant island. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I'm super stoked. We are for that. so doing that one in my school next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm thinking now, like, oh, yes. So uh, that that one's going to be a hit here. We're going to have to have like a dinosaur party and have all the kids in the neighborhood come over and and, and color and and create. So yeah. our third and fourth graders have a field trip to the field museum where they go see Sue the dinosaur, and so they have a huge dinosaur unit. So that would go perfect okay, with the cool. whole dinosaur unit. Yeah, right. yeah. To to me, um, these digital environments they definitely uh, create community. And I love in that video how it talked about um, capturing students to come in to, um, to color a fish and check out a book. And, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and to be excited about that library time. And um, it's great for, for libraries to have maker spaces um, who are learning about um, the different fish, uh, different animals. Um, but yeah, the dinosaur. Oh, we we have to have the dinosaur one. You have you have to keep us you have to keep us privy of uh, when that release date is going to be. But if the, you need any testers, let us know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. No, we always need testers. It's something we actually kind of yeah, do struggle with. So yeah, we'll get you on the beta beta launch so you can let us know what you like and what you hopefully not, but what they might not be good or how we can improve it. <laughs> yeah. So um, for quiver. Uh, we have the AR workbooks here, my first augmented reality workbooks. Here's the math book that's, um, that, that's being worked on with shapes and numbers, um, the creative writing journal, and here's kind of a, a little video of the books. 
And then um, uh, for those of you who are what? You were echoing. Oh, sorry. The echoes are bad. Um, for those who are interested in um, an education subscription, it's very easy to, uh, to subscribe. The education subscription is for classrooms. There's the individual subscription as well. These are for homeschooling parents or if a teacher just wants to have, you know, a device in the classroom, a, maybe a center, um, that would be amazing. But uh, you can get started for free. You get a seven-day free trial. And um, you have access to over 250 coloring pages that can help you, uh, that can be a great vehicle for teaching your content and your standards. And um, there's never, there's never a day that uh, students are, you know, when you say, hey, we're going to do some augmented reality coloring pages and learn about the, you know, the human body or the plant and animal cells, they're, they're going to be excited. Um, there's never a day that you use Quiver where they're going to go, oh, no, you know. So um, how much does it cost? Uh, they have seat plans. There's five different ones, 10 seats, 30 seats, 75 seats, 150, and a 500-seat school plan. Um, so it's $60, 60 for the year for 10 seats, which is a steal. $99 for 30 seats, 120 for 75. So as you guys are thinking about classroom budgets and school budgets for next year, please consider Quiver Vision because uh, the, the coloring pages and the content are across all grade levels and curriculums. Um, there's, you're not going to use it just once. You're going to find multiple ways to use it, especially with those handwriting books and uh, that journal. So there's a video on how to um, subscribe to the dashboard. And um, there's some wonderful testimonies. Um, Shannon McClinic Miller, uh, Michael Bonner. So definitely um, check out that Quiver subscription. Um, are there opportunities for piloting um, or, or writing for the program? Um, Kimberly, what do you mean about um, writing for the program? Um, we've got a person from Montreal, Canada. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Carlos. Um, any any questions that you guys have for for Nils or or me or Heather? Um, we're happy to answer them. And again, it's quivervision.com. You can buy those books, those workbooks in bulk. And we are super excited about our next project, um, which is Peter and Meter, which we actually have a meeting on right after this call to talk about the amazing augmented reality content for Peter and Meter the SEL robot that is just absolutely adorable with an amazing story. All the activity she has going with that book is just amazing. I can't wait. Yes, actually, let me, let me see here. I'm going to go to my handy dandy Canva dashboard and type in Peter a meter and see if I can give you a preview. So um, here's, if, actually, if you guys want to join her launch team, here is the launch team. Um, Trisha Fugelstad, uh, she's, again, created this amazing animated book. These are some of the animations that she's created. Look at that rocket there. Um, help launch Peter a meter. And it's, it's really um, just helping spread awareness, you know, posting each week, making sure people are aware of this amazing book that, that Trisha, Teacher Goals, and Quiver Vision is um, bringing to life. And then the finish line, so. Yeah, it's gonna be cool, that one. We haven't done many, we've always wanted to do robots as another pack of, pa uh, pack of papers that we'd like to launch. Um, so yeah, it's really, we're really excited to be able to work with that, with you, Amanda, and Teacher Goals. And um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. and. I hope Trisha doesn't get mad. I'm going to, I'm just going to open this real quick. We're going to show it. We're going to show it. So here's some, here's some more teasers. So this is the making of, um, of Peter a meter. So these are, yeah. this is kind Trisha. of the inspiration behind it. Yeah. Trisha is so talented. It's amazing what she's done. She is so talented. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have another robot book called Artie Bot. Draws a lot. It's about a. He's a little AI robot, and Trisha's going to be doing the illustrations for that one as well. And um, 
it's it's all about um, you know already already kind of lives in this robotic world. So this is a robotic classroom, but she's she's really just created this entire universe. Robot recess, um, a robot living room. We got there's there's your uh, aquarium back there. Yeah. <laughs> Robotic aquarium. Robotic aquarium. Um, the bedroom. And she does a great job of sharing what she is doing on social media as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Flying machines. This is the flying school bus. This is um looks like Ms. Prizzles. Yeah, it does, <laughs> doesn't it? A little a little Ms. <laughs> Prizzle action there. Um Tinkertron High. And um, then here's some vignettes just from um, the book. And we got all of our emotions and springs and robot parts here. But yeah, here's, here's the animated cover. So um, super stoked for this book. Can't wait for it to come out. Um, let's see. We, uh, I really like the hygiene. We got a, a comment on the hygiene activities from Covington, Georgia. So um, thank you for tuning in and glad you're enjoying the pages. Um, that that kind of brings us toward the end of the show. Um, thank you, Nils, for coming on. And um, Heather, again, for being a wonderful co-host. Is there any um, anything you want to leave our viewers with? Me? No, I'd just like to say thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Heather, for having us. Um, I've enjoyed watching all of your episodes. I, I really enjoyed Trisha's one a couple of months ago. It was really, especially since meeting her and, and looking at what she does. Um, but no, otherwise, we've got a whole lot of new content coming out. So and we'll, we try to announce everything on social media. So if you can follow us and do enjoy anything, if there's any requests for specific content, please feel free to send that through to us. Um, we're always open to ideas um, just to help us kind of develop what, what you guys want. That's all. That's what I'd like to leave with. Um, yeah, we will continue doing what we do. But yeah, if there is anything that anyone would love to see, please just let us know. Yep. And um, look into their ambassador program. I think you guys just closed it for this year, but um, they're always looking for lesson plans. If you're, if you're using Quiver in the classroom, you've got a great idea. Share mm -hmm. it with others because sharing is caring. And we'll add that lesson plan to the activity plan library. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, there's that, our Facebook community is slowly growing. We've got a couple of 2,000, maybe 3,000 now um, in that group that essentially is that people sharing what they how, how and what they do with Quiver in their classroom. Um, and that's the beauty of it. It's just other teachers kind of collaborating and helping each other, which is awesome. Yes. Um, and uh, definitely um, join that group. It's the Quiver's educator community. And um, if you if you're in there, continue sharing. And we appreciate everything that you guys do. All right. Uh, thank you, Nils. Um, thank you. Tune in next week. Next week we have Auto Classmate. It's an AI tool for class for the classroom, and we look forward to seeing you then. Don't forget to um, purchase bulk bulk copies of that augmented reality workbook series, and um, keep your eye out for Trisha's uh, Peter Meter. Bye. Bye. Courses by Teacher Goals. Register now for the Canva Classroom.